Jan Kozamernik. On the court, he's the monster middle from Slovenia who's made his home from home in Italy. Off the court, he's a friendly giant with great stories. I gave him a call to catch up. We talked about the proudest moments in his career, flying the nest, and I tried to get some financial tips and an invite to a steak dinner after the game. Hello, Hello. mate. How are you? Hey, man. I'm doing great. You? Yeah, mate. I'm, uh, I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm looking forward to, to having a chat, actually. It's always yeah. good to find out how people are getting on. Uh, well, how are you getting on, actually? Are you happy, healthy? Yeah, I'm happy. I'm healthy. Uh, it's been an interesting couple of months. Um, it's been a little bit strange since we're not practicing, and it's a it's a different kind of lifestyle that we're having right now. Have you missed it? Yeah, I did a lot. I mean, I'm trying to I'm trying to play. Uh, I mean, practice as much as I can, doing a lot of workouts and stuff. But like playing with the ball, it's been. I've been missing it a lot, and um, I'm, I can't wait to play some beach volleyball now in the uh, next days. So, yeah. Oh, so you've actually, have you made plans to get out on the beach and hit a ball? I mean, I live really close to a really big beach volleyball, beach volleyball center, and um, it's been kind of uh, dragging me to play. <laughs> so, yeah, I, uh, um, there's a lot of like, guys from the national team that are also in Ljubljana, Mm-hmm. Um, and we, we need to do something and uh, playing beach volleyball is like a really good activity you have um, like you can play with friends you can play with like um, guys from the national team and it's like it's a place to it's a place to like gather and have fun you don't get the chance to win or lose when you're on lockdown do you is that something that you're, you're thinking about yeah it's weird because you don't get that um, anxiety when playing <laughs> you know you don't get that push of energy when you when you're competing and it's um yeah I've been missing it a lot so in the in the last couple of weeks I've been trying to play a little bit of tennis because this was allowed before yeah Uh, um I've been doing some hiking but yeah it's not it's not the same when you're not competing but uh absolutely that's I think that's the biggest part that's the biggest part of um like the the energy that's missing right now uh, that you get from from the volleyball court that you get from the matches uh, from the audience it's like it's they've been talking about matches without audience hmm. and without spectators it's like it's weird to play again without spectators it's like it's something you cannot imagine it's it's insane so yeah especially especially with you in Italy as well because the supporters are so good aren't they they're, they're just a massive part of the game yeah, they're really passionate about um, like supporting their team, and um, they always follow it, follow you around. Like um, even when you go play in like uh, when you play an away match, mm-hmm. it's always they they always go there and support you, even though maybe not in in the same number. Mm-hmm. But it's it's always really nice. Um, and for me, actually, it doesn't even matter if they're cheering, cheering for you or they're cheering against you. It's just the energy that you get from the from the audience. That's kind of like it gives you a little bit like those 10 extra percent that you can like push a little bit more so it's always really nice to play yeah I I always love the fact that you've got obviously people in very different roles so you as a player or me as a commentator or somebody there as a fan but having all those people there for a for a single purpose it's it's something quite amazing isn't it yeah it's insane I mean it's a really nice um like it's it's really hard to get a lot of people together mm. and it's really nice that with sport you can do that and it, this this has been an example when we had the european championship here in ljubljana mm. i've never seen like slovenian fans so united like so together and it was like an insane moment for us because we never played uh, in front of a full hall before mm. and it was like an, an an insane experience that i've never like it's it's different because it's my nation yeah. and it's different because it gives different meaning to me um when you play in the club it's you you feel that like you're a part of something but it's not the same when you play for the nation for the national team and it's it's a really nice experience so yeah sport is really great with bringing people together and that we can do and have fun together so yeah would you say that's the sort of proudest moment of your professional career yeah i would say so i mean we we've won the medal before in 2015 um but i think for us 
it's not about the medal. It was more about like bringing people together, bringing people to watch volleyball because in Slovenia it was never really popular, and um, it was like one of the one of yeah probably one of the proudest moments in my career. Um, playing playing in front of the full hall, hearing the anthem. It was like when everybody was singing it. I I I still get the chills when thinking about it. So it's it's yeah, it's one of the one of the greatest moments for sure. Amazing. Um, did you find that people were slightly different with you afterwards or during? Did you get sort of recognised more? Yeah, for sure, we get more recognition now. Um, especially when you get like when you need to when you need to do something when you need like help from someone. People are a lot more open. It, it happened to me actually when when me and my some of my friends from the national team we went during I, I think it was a little bit before or during uh, European uh, European Championship we went to to get something to eat and there was a car a place that uh, sold car parts okay. close to the close to the shop and one lady came out and she was like. If you ever need something, you can just come in and we'll give you a really good discount. Like, we're really proud that you guys are playing so great. And I was like, wow, it's insane. Because this never happened to us before. And um, it was like, um, in such a small country, you get a lot of recognition really fast. But mm. it also, like, it also changes really fast. So people really forget you really quickly. Probably it's everywhere the same, but it's uh in slovenia it happens a lot because we have a lot of successful like athletes and stuff so but yeah we still get more recognition for sure i brought the best out of you that though didn't it because weren't you were you the best did you, you made the dream team in that tournament yeah, I was I made the dream. that was yeah it was the first time that was actually one of my biggest dreams like to 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 achieve something like that to be in a dream team or uh i don't know like one of the most valuable players so it's uh it was uh, it was really nice, but like to me, I don't think it means this. It means um, so much. It means more the bringing together all the Slovenia and like feeling that passion that we live together as a country. So I think that was mo more important to me than like in the end having the medal or having um, the dream, having made the dream team. It was like it's a personal goal that I had, but. Uh, Right now, I feel really proud about it, but at the moment, at that moment, it didn't feel um, so so major, you know. It was like it it was a little bit different because they didn't also give awards right away at the ceremony. It was a little bit different. It was a different um, different as in 2000, 2015 when we had uh, the first medal. So you've talked about like proud moments and ambitions. There are there any other? ambitions any other boxes that you really want to tick as a professional player um one of them was for sure um ma uh, making the world championship like mm -hmm. uh, going to the world championship mm -hmm. um which we did in 2018 um that was really great but like for the future i think one of the biggest ones is winning italian championship winning it yeah that would be that would be one of the biggest dreams i mean i think everybody has this as a as a, one of the biggest goals for sure because it's one of the toughest leagues to win and um, I think it's also like one of the most valuable ones so I don't know that that's one of the that's one of the goals that I have maybe I don't know also let's say let's say having also like personal goals like um, being the best middle blocker in Italy or something like this but yeah that's like I want to become the best player that I can be. It doesn't matter if I win awards or no. It's uh, me feeling good about myself. So that's that's important to me. Ambitions, mate. I love them. I absolutely <laughs> love them. And let's have a, a chat about Italy then, because it just seems like the most amazing place, both in terms of, of volleyball, but to actually get the chance to to live your life and spend some years there must be must be amazing. But was it a difficult decision for you? Um, as a young man to leave Slovenia and go and set up a life in Italy? Uh, actually, I was really thinking about it. Like when I was still studying, I was, um, I was actually like thinking about how it would be going, studying also abroad because mm -hmm. that was one of my goals also. Mm -hmm. So I actually wanted to go abroad. It was like, it wasn't one of the, it wasn't a fear that I had that going abroad would be like, strange for me mm -hmm. um but always you get that anxiety when you when it when it's like really close 
you're like, oh, it's uh, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be a big change in my life. But I think now I, I think I handled it really good. Yeah. Um, in the beginning, it's a little bit tough because Italians don't speak English really good. So uh, it's a little bit difficult with the language. But um, I went to Trentino. So they were they were a little bit more experienced and they had a lot of guys that sp- spoke English. So it was a little bit easier. And they and I also started to learn Italian really fast. So it was, okay. uh, I think it was like half a year, I think in like six months. No, it was less. I think in three months, I already understood everything. And then wow. speaking it was like at the end of the first season, I was speaking it good enough to speak and to communicate. Um, and then I think in like a year and a half, I was speaking speaking it fluently. So I think it, uh, I think I think it's really important, especially when you move to a new country. Mm. It's really important that you learn the language that you, that you have there because you also learn the culture. Yeah. And Italians, they're really proud of their culture and. Uh, if you don't speak Italian, they also don't take you seriously. So I think that was a big, big factor for me when I when I came to Italy, that I learned Italian really fast. So yeah, an amazing country, amazing culture. But what did you say? Three months and you could understand them, and then yeah, God. especially because like when you when when you use it, we used it probably mostly in um, in volleyball. So you already have the concept of what like words are gonna mean Mm -hmm. and then you just put things together and you start to understand things so um but then tenses and all this like um more complicated stuff you learn with i don't know i had i was using duolingo app okay that's uh the free app and it's uh it helped me a lot especially with vocabulary and um, um learning the tenses but then also speaking it i think mostly when you speak it you learn it because of because of speaking so and also people people like um my uh, players in the team they helped me when uh, when i was making mistakes they told me okay you're making this and this wrong you have to do it like this and then it becomes a lot more easy but if you don't have this uh and also if you don't have the will to learn it it's uh, a little bit difficult what language do you think in uh when i'm when i'm in italy i i try to speak in italian it happened to me already that i spoke in, that i taught in italian um when i speak in english i i think in english and i, I can like the the languages that i speak good i can think in um but mostly i think for example dreaming i think i dream always in slovenian so okay yeah. so you've got slovenian english italian any others um i i can speak serbian and croatian but they're mostly like the same um they're really similar they have a little bit like some different words and stuff but all of us slovenians we tend to know how to speak uh serbian and croatian because like we're all together and we usually go there for vacation so you have to learn it um because they don't speak or understand Slovene, so it's uh, a little bit different <laughs> i know i know how amazing that if you if you are good enough a player though, like you can just mm. get a shop and make somewhere else your mm. home. I mean, Milan is your sort of home away from home now. How cool yeah. is that? <laughs> yeah, it's insane. It's incredible. When I think like uh, when I was younger, thinking about playing in Milan and like playing in a really good league like this, it's uh, it's always been a dream. So. I can I can see now coming back like seeing all those young players that we have like here in my club that I started in. Um, everybody's so passionate and want to do like want to do great in volleyball, but it's like the reality is like a, a little amount of like small amount of uh, players make it so far, and I'm like I'm really proud about this, mm-hmm. and I'm like um, also like really conscious about it about this because it's not something that's like it. It happens. It's like uh, you have to work really hard about it. When did you want to turn pro then? And when did you think it would be a realistic thing? Um, I think it was like when I signed my first contract here in Ljubljana. Mm -hmm. Um, It was like, I think it was a moment when I was like um, studying a lot. I was studying electrical engineering. Mm -hmm. And I was also really passionate about about this. and also, like, my father has a company with that works in this area. And um, I was, like, I always saw myself in, like, working in this area. But, like, when I did so good in volleyball, I was, like, 
I got the passion. The passion was already there because I really liked volleyball. Also because like it's a team sport and everything. Um, but when I saw that like I'm doing good and also like with all the let's say not success but like when I was doing better yeah. it always became an option and when it became an option I, was, I started to think like ahead a little bit and um, I got the idea that it might be actually a good opportunity to like live uh, a really good life yeah. and like do what you like which is for me really important because I have a lot of friends that don't work in the jobs that they love and for for me I think that was like I think that was the turning point when I understood that I wanted to do something that I love and volleyball was one of the things and that I could actually do. It was, it was, uh, instant, uh, instant choice. I couldn't like, refuse it. <laughs> well, no, well, and, and here we are talking about yeah. ambitions of winning Italian championships and having European medals. It's a, it's a pretty amazing <laughs> life, isn't it? So a little bird tells me that you have more than a passing interest in the financial markets. Is this true? <laughs> Where did you get to know this? <laughs> I cannot possibly reveal my sources, mate. I keep them close to my chest. So what's yeah, the story actually, there? <laughs> uh, I'm going to tell you the truth. Yeah, I, I try to follow them as much as I can. Um, it's like, I wouldn't say... I wouldn't say um, a habit, but it's like a passion that I like to do. Um, I like to follow them because I also like to invest uh, in stocks and this. Uh, but I never, I never want to do it too risky. So I'm like more on the stable, stable side. I want to just maybe get some interest in, and that's uh, that's basically what I'm looking for. But it's uh, it gives you a thrill. It's a different kind of thrill, and. Um, I always liked um, financial markets. I have also a lot of friends that do this, so it's um, it's basically I'm I'm in the circles where where people tend to talk a lot about like financials and uh, economics. So I have one of my best friends too, actually, that are studying economics. So huh. it's like I'm always surrounded by this stuff, and it's hard not to uh, it's hard to overlook them. <laughs> <laughs> right then, I. Had a little, had a little look through some old games, and I'm just going to play you, play you a video now, um, just of of a match that you were involved with. Tell me what your memories of this, of this one game are, and do you recognise it? Yeah, of course. <laughs> that was insane. I don't know. It was like a major, a major stone fell, like it rolled off of our backs because we wanted to succeed really bad and it was like insane um especially in front of the uh, front in front of the crowd that we had there it was like i was i was so thrilled so pumped with energy i think everybody was like we when we came to the locker room after this it was like everybody was shaking it's like <laughs> this is insane and um I think we got really emotional uh, because everybody was there, our families, everybody was watching. And when you play abroad, when you play these championships abroad, not everybody has the chance to bring their family to watch. And um, I think it was like, I don't know. I told you already before, I get the chills when I, when I think of this. Um, and yeah, it's like winning. It was, I think for us, it was like winning the European Championship. It, I, I don't think it actually mattered that we played the final and we lost it after. But for us, that was the, that was the final, probably. I would say so. I think especially when we talked with the guys after, it was like this was our final. We wanted to win here. Then after, it was like a different... It was already a different environment. We, we, we came to a foreign place. It wasn't like... You didn't feel the same. And um, it's, it's great memories. I was like... I was a couple of days ago, I was... Uh, about to watch it but I didn't have time not this one but like all of the matches and also the studios before that they do and everything because we got them on a USB stick and it was like wow I was like I was so thrilled to watch it again <laughs> but it's different because you leave it from a third person you leave it like you you're not playing it you're like watching it and you get different different emotions and all this so it's gonna be a it's gonna be a different uh, experience for sure uh, right, quick game time. God, I could talk to you all day, but this game's called Simply the Best, and I'm just going to ask you a series of questions 
and I want to know what you think the best thing is in a certain category, okay? First of all, best player you've ever played against? Uh, I would say, I would say, like, it's so, it's so uh, common, but I would say Leon is one of the really good players. You'd be amazed how often his name comes up. <laughs> <laughs> best sport that isn't volleyball? Um, I would say basketball. The best Slovenian sports person of all time? Uh, I would go for our skier, uh, Tina Maza. Oh, yeah, all right, I'll give you that. <laughs> um, the best music or song to listen to before a game? Before a game. Oh, I love Do the John Wall. Do you know it? No, it's a, it's a song that was made for John Wall uh, when he was going uh, off college to NBA. It's like, it gives you a lot of energy. Actually, one of my uh, really good uh, teammates showed it to me, Stephen Marr, and they were like, it was insane. <laughs> it's, okay. It gives you a lot of energy. <laughs> All right, I'll have a listen to that then. Uh, I think I already know the answer to this, but best moment of your career? Yeah. It's probably the one that you showed me. So, um, playing against the full hall in Ghana. I think I know the answer to this one as well. Best atmosphere you've ever experienced. <laughs> I think the answer doesn't change. <laughs> uh, best thing about being a pro? Um, as I told you before, doing something that you love and like um, also um, earning money with it and. Um, it's uh it's all in one like we we can do the thing that we love um earning money having a good time knowing um getting to know new people uh because socializing in in our sport i think it's really important um and especially like it gives you a lot of possibility to 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 think um you have you have time but you have to spend it well and i think it's really important that you that you find the things that uh, also that interest you outside of volleyball. Mm -hmm. And I think as a pro, you have time that you dedicate to volleyball and also that you can dedicate to some other things. And um, for me, it was, for example, cooking. So now I have a lot of time because we have to cook and I have to eat good. Mm -hmm. So um, I have to eat well and um, it's important that I cook good. So, yeah. God, that's a good answer. We're going to pick up on the cooking a bit, but we've got to finish the game first. Yeah. Um, best place in the world volleyball has taken you? Best place? Hmm. I would say I really liked Japan. When I went to Japan, that was really good. Also, Australia was nice. That sounds good to me. Uh, yeah. best, <laughs> best food to eat after a win? After a win? Uh, I don't think there's a lot of foods there. <laughs> no, um, let's say in Italy, the most common one is pizza. But we usually go, we usually go after a really important match, we go to eat steaks in a really good place that's really close to the hall. So. Oh, that sounds amazing. <laughs> oh, do you know, you're so, you're so lucky, though, because that's not always the case in Italy. The first, yeah. first Champions League game I ever did was... Um, in the Women's Champions League, Corneliano, and they've okay. got the Palo Verde, which is in the middle of nowhere, and I was so <laughs> hungry after the game, and there was just nothing. There oh, no. <laughs> just, just so, <laughs> like, oh, yeah, fine, yeah, I'll just get some food somewhere. No, you won't. Zero. <laughs> so if there's, a, if there's a good restaurant close to your gym, you make yeah. sure you, uh, I mean, in Milan, it's difficult that there wouldn't be. <laughs> uh. Yeah. So you're you've got big into you've got big into cooking. Then I'd mm -hmm. imagine Milan is a is a pretty amazing place, food wise. Yeah, like uh, is it does it does it, can you say culinary? Yes. Yeah. yeah. The it, they have a lot of diversity oh. there, and um, you can like I was really searching because I love Japan, right? I told you that it, 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 it has taken me volleyball there, but I was also with my family there a couple of like when I was, I think it was 2012, so a lot of time um, ago. And I wanted to eat some Japanese food, uh, which is called okonomiyaki, if you know. It's like the around thing um, with cabbage and stuff inside. Um, and it was like everywhere else that I was looking for okonomiyaki, 
I couldn't found, find it. And like in Milan, they had like two or three places. So it's, it's insane. They have everything. So yeah, it's, uh, it gives you a lot of uh, diversity and you can try a lot of new things. I, was, I, was also ate, I also ate in a Nepalese restaurant. It's like, you cannot find it everywhere. So yeah. And let's, let's finish with a bit more optimism because this has been a really sort of uplifting chat. It's been so good to talk to you. What are you most looking forward to? Probably one of the most uh, anticipated things right now are, is playing volleyball again. Um, like, I t like I told you, like beach volleyball is already open, but mm -hmm. I, I, I don't think it's the same. It's like different kind of energy, different kind of atmosphere there. And um, I would love to play a match, uh, a game in front of the crowd. That would be insane to do. Thank, uh, thank you very much. Look after yourself, yeah? We'll speak soon. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Yes, Jan, a oh, brilliant chat. I really hope you guys enjoyed listening to that as much as I enjoyed having the conversation itself. And he was right, Do the John Wall is a banger and you definitely get energy before a game listening to that one. Um, what an interesting guy as well, interested in the stock market, finishing his studies and learning Italian in three months. How is that even possible. Either way, looking forward to catching up when the games are getting back on. And if you enjoyed that, then remember our very first unscripted was with his Milan middle blocking teammate Teo Piano. So go and check that one out. And we've just confirmed that his former Trentino teammate Simona Gianelli is going to be on the Ace Space podcast. So the big guests coming thick and fast. Make sure you stay involved, like and subscribe to make sure you can keep up because we've got so much great content for you. All is good here. I hope all is good with you as well. Get in touch. It's been great to make more friends. People keep sending me messages and I've absolutely loved it. So do keep them coming. But until we speak again, goodbye.